Hello everybody, welcome to the Science Test Room. Today we are taking a look at the Roland S1 Tweak Synthesizer. This thing is a powerhouse. It's, it's an absolute beauty. <laughs> the sound design capabilities in this thing are insane. They really are great. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a sequence and a like a, a, a sound design patch from scratch. So we'll make a sequence and a patch, right? So you get, so this won't be like a complete, deep dive tutorial but i will do tutorials on the sections uh, if you're interested you can leave a comment below please strike the like if you enjoy the video uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed and consider becoming a patron right okay let's go what do you get you get basically four banks of 16 sounds and patterns so a preset is a pattern and in a bank so if we press the pattern button here you'll see i'm on bank two pattern number seven and the sound in that is let's go pattern now i've also got it hooked up to my little midi keyboard so okay and the sequence i programmed to go with that sounds like this So you can program all that movement and you have up to eight motion sequences. You can either put them in either by step or recording live. I prefer to record them live, but you can do it in step mode if you like. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so you can access many, many functions. It's very deep. You can access many functions and other menus by holding shift and then selecting one of these flashing buttons here that you see. So, for instance, to polyphony, you hit poly here, which says poly. And then you've got different modes. You've got poly, chord, mono, unison. Or you can press poly and do it with the data encoder as well. But you can just scroll through by pressing the poly button. So there's lots of shortcuts and stuff like this. Selecting patterns and banks of patterns. Okay, so what we do is we press pattern. OK, and you'll see we're in bank two. If we hold pattern, you'll see that these first four will flash. So this is bank one of 16, bank two, 16, bank three of 16, bank four of 16. So, if, for example, if you wanted to pick something from bank one, let go and then you just choose a pattern. And these are factory patterns. <laughs> You want to choose another bank bank two three and four are empty you can overwrite the patterns in pattern one as well so you can have up to 64 patterns and sounds the presets are part of the pattern so for example i would choose say number 10 here and that's the sound i programmed into bank two number 10 so you can use it it's just an ordinary synth and it's four note polyphonic it's based on the sh101 engine the synth engine in this but it is polyphonic so four notes okay so before we get into anything more deep than that let's go to a blank patch now i know that number 12 here there's nothing in it and i can do this by just pressing oops sorry number 12 exit pattern and here's the default sign and if you look at the actual uh, oscilloscope above the screen you can see that that's a square let's increase the sustain i'll go back to my midi keyboard so we have a square wave. I'll just turn all these down. These are the other waveforms. So still a square. Volume of the square wave. You have an LFO for pitch here on the oscillator. The rate is controlled here. And you'll see the rate is in frequency. You can change that to uh, time. So I'm going to do that first, okay? I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to press menu, 
First thing in menu is volume. I'm going to use my data encoder here to move along. That's modulation depth. That's for the pitch bend range. That's for the pitch bend frequency. If you're using a MIDI controller, you can set the frequency of the cutoff. Um, this is for, I think, is it noise? Let me just check. I'm going to enter this menu. Yep, that's for noise. That's noise type. So at the moment, the noise is actually... Um, pink so let's yeah pink and you can change that to white noise as well okay so let's just go back but i am looking for lfo so lfo mode this is so the lfo can run in two modes right so listen this is frequency now But also, you see, if we enter this, you can normal or we can have it fast. So it'll run super fast. Start to get ring modulate -y. Ring modulator. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so let's going to put that back to normal mode. I'm going to exit the axle thing and carry on. So... <clears throat> LFO S is LFO Sync. So I'm going to enter that and I'm going to switch it on. And now our LFO, let's exit this now, is in resolutions of the beat. So we'll leave it on 1.8 for now and turn it down. Now the LFO also affects the filter envelope. So let's... Okay. If you want pulse width modulation on your sound, hold shift and turn this uh, square wave knob. You see underneath it's a, it's a little pulse width thing. I'll just, let me just put my uh, sustain pedal on. Actually, we can just hold a note. And you can also have the LFO, um, sorry, you can pulse with either manual or triggered by the envelope here. The envelope is shared with the filter and the actual, the volume curve. So for example, if we actually, I'm going to take that, I'm going to take the pulse width off. So if I turn up our sustain, our release, or our attack. But it also affects the filter. And it and then we can control it with our envelope amount. Now, if you want your amp to be controlled, if you want your filter to be controlled by the envelope, that's fine. That's hardwired in. But we can disconnect the ADSR from the amp. If we hold shift and amp, at the moment it's following envelope, but then we could set it to gate. And then the amp is just going to be a, 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 an on-off and only the filter will be affected by our ADSR. See, our, our amp is just it's an on off now, no matter where it releases. release is. Let's put that back to envelope for now. Exit. Now, we can blend in our other waveforms. So if we turn our 
هزار صبح صبح and you can go an octave I'll do this in another video but you can go an octave down and then have an asymmetrical waveform for the sub which is basically a, a square wave you can see what we smoothed it off with the filter right anyway let's turn that down and then we have noise we have some cool stuff we can do with the noise which is for another video as well right let's get on with doing this we have the ability to chop or draw way our own waveforms. This is what gives the S1 its unique uh, synth programming vibe, if you like. Um, this, this, its superpower is this chop and draw. This is so important. Next to this, you'll see filter keyboard. That is literally track filter tracking cut off. So the filter will be, if, if this is switched on, you can set the amount here. And uh, it, when it's on its full whack, which is 255, the filter will be fully open at the top. And then you can set how much the filter closes as you move down the keyboard sort of thing. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We can exit that mode. Right, let's take a quick look at draw mode uh, so you get an idea. And like, this will make sense when you look at the uh, actual waveform there at the top. What, to get into draw mode, we hit shift and draw right now draw mode replaces the square wave this is the switch okay so if we hold shift and square um, um sawtooth wave we can have it off which is the default or step or slope slope is smoother so let's go with step and now with the sound here's different let's put the sustain up See on the waveform? Let's turn the volume up a little bit for you. Sorry, that's the decay. See, it's changed now. It's more like a triangle with these little shapes in it. If we go to, let me hit hold. Actually, I'll just put my sustain pedal on. If we change this to See, it's smoother now. It's just like a triangle. Step. Let's leave it on step. And our next thing in our menu here is form. Now you'll see that these have changed. If I play a key and I hold, I'll hold a note. Watch what happens if I start to push this and adjust this. So notice in the center just do this here watch this here this is the center of that waveform this is this and this is that there so watch what happens if I hold the center and reduce this rate You start to build up very very cool wavetables and then you can go on you can just carry on holding the the, the piece you want to chop again let me sustain with my keyboard okay so you get a really nice sound going The next thing along here in the menu is multiply. So again, what you can do is either hold shift and use this, uh, sorry, shift and this. Now we'll increase the multiplication. So I'll hold a note. Here's our sound. It's like sync, hard sync. can also do this by just entering the menu.
Okay, so say you're happy with that sound, etc. We'll just exit all of this, hold shift and one to exit the draw menu. Now the chop menu I will do in a separate video because it will make more sense. But it's kind of like the same thing, but you can do it over this, but it's it <laughs> it's not the same thing at all. So what's cool now is we can add a bit of reverb. You can change the reverb by type hit and shift reverb. That's you can change the type, the time, the level. Um, the, well, I'm not sure what that is. There's all this low cut and high cut uh, density. So you can do all sorts of stuff. Let's exit this with the reverb. And then you also have a, a delay as well, which you can adjust the time, feedback, etc. etc. Let's have a bit of. bit of delay and a bit of let's add some what's really good now is once you've designed your custom oscillator you can still bring blend in your other oscillators too so blending in a bit of sub the square you could put some noise in if you want to okay so let's say you're happy with your basic sound. I mean, you can go on sound design and you could go into chop mode instead and use that. That's different, like I said. I might quickly show you chop mode in a sec, but let's get a, a sequence down. In fact, let's look at chop mode. Let's save this first so you know how to save. So to save a sequence or a pattern now there's no pattern in here but there is a sound and you want to save your sound right hold shift hit right okay change this to all which is pattern and sequence and all emotion and stuff and just everything and just hit enter and it's done so now if i go to pattern choose slot 13 which we know there's nothing in we're just back to a basic patch and i'll quickly show you chop mode so exit pattern shift chop first thing in the chop menu is this overtone right so enter you have to have a value in the overtone let me set this to sustain so you can see what's going on on your oscilloscope you have to have overtone if there's no overtone nothing's going to change <laughs> All right, so you can go up to, I think it's, is it 200? Yeah. Let's just set this back to around, I don't know, 109 will do. Okay, so exit, and then you're back into the main kind of shop menu. Next, right, is square. This, or not this. This will chop, watch the waveform. We're chopping bits out now. Okay, move along and then you'll be able to do the same for the saw. So let's turn the square down and turn the saw up. Basic saw wave, right? So you're chopping bits out, you can see on the, on the waveform view. Okay, next one along is the sub. You can do the same for the sub. So let's turn the saw down and listen to the sub. Very cool sound. And then the next one along on that menu is noise. And this is really nice, right? So let's turn this up. We know it defaults to a pink noise, but you can change that if you want. But now we can take out sections of the noise. This is great for special effects. And if we take it out all together, we're just left with a very quiet noise. 
so turn that down and now we can blend in our three chopped waveforms put a bit of uh, Okay, so that's a nice sound. You also have, apart from the reverb and delay here, you also have um, a chorus. So to we'll just sh shift, get rid of this engine. We'll go shift and pad one. We'll exit you from the chop and the drawer engines, right? So let's get shift and menu, and we'll just scroll along into, ah, there we go, chorus. There's chorus in here. Now, there's not a great deal of control over the chorus. They're more like the Dimension D choruses. So enter. Chorus is off. Chorus one. So off. Chorus two. That one's like a chorus and a rotary. And this is less. Less modulation on the chorus. So one is really nice. So let's leave it at that. We can exit this menu just by hitting this and then this again. Okay, so let's save that sound and go back to our other sound and make a sequence. So we'll hold shift, right, all, done pattern 12 and we know there's nothing in there but that's our sound right now we can have a pattern length of up to four bars or 64 steps or anywhere in between to set our pattern length we hold make sure we're on the pattern we want to work with of course hold shift we can exit this as well we can get out of pattern mode hold shift press last and you'll see it says 16. So this is going to give us a one bar pattern, 16 steps. But we can just take this right up to 64, which is going to be over four bars. We can exit that mode now. We can also give ourselves a counting. Now, I think I have this set for a one bar counting or four beats. To set a counting, hold shift menu and look for something that says, I know what I see it. There's lots, these are all in the manual, by the way, what they are. And they're very, all very useful. CNT, control one. CNT, so I think it means count, okay? It does mean count, idiot. Right, enter. And you see, I've got it set on four. That's four beats, it's one bar. You can go off, so there's none. Four or two, three, four. I'm going to leave it on four. I'm just going to exit that. And then exit this menu. And now when I hold sh uh, record, then play. I'm going to get, and you'll see it starts counting along now. And then it'll disappear because it's going over four pages. Anyway, look. What we're going to do, stop that, is record a little sequence in. I'm going to turn the... 10, the first thing, the main thing on this page is the tempo. So that's always there. I'm going to turn this to 120 BPM. And I'm just going to play something in quick over those four bars. So. Now, while it's recording, I can still go in and add notes over the top don't forget it's polyphonic so I could do so now I've recorded that in
Okay. We also have um, eight lanes of motion sequencing, if you like. Now, it's there is ways to do this in step mode, and there's lots of different ways you can use step mode and things like this. But, but it's really easy to record in via things. So we can just start off and hit record, and now everything is in record mode. So. everything and it'll tell you when you've used all your all your slots if you like it'll just say full so listen to that now very cool it gets cooler if we hit step mode now, we can see the steps that we programmed in, right, over. So 1 to 16, 17 to 32, 33 to 48, 49 to 64. We can go through the pages of our steps and we can choose individual notes. Now, you'll see that that says D, it says D5. That step number six in our sequence was a D5. We can change the note there if we want to. Or we can hit this little thing that says D motion when it's flashing because it's now what it's saying is destination. And we could go, right, well, okay, hold this, press it again. That's velocity. This is, uh, I think, is it gate? It might not be gate. This is ratcheting. So velocity, I think it's gate. Uh, probability ratchet can't remember what that is um and it goes back to velocity so look on this one let's go right okay ratchets so i'm gonna do it like this this is just normal one this would repeat twice repeat three times repeat four times and then kind of variations of this pattern so let's just set this on, let's go back to beginning and just have it repeat twice and see what happens. Don't forget this step here. Hear that? Let's go to another page. This one. Okay, you also have a couple of performance modes, shift and step loop. We'll loop between two points. Key transpose now, hold shift. Back to normal. Exit. Speed it up, slow it down, whatever you want to do. Let's go shift. Holly, it's going to unison. Back to Polly. Chord mode. Guys, I'm going to leave it there for now because...
<laughs> for Watson. I'm going to leave it there for now because I, I want to do another video going over the different LFO types, um, things like that, you know, other kind of cool programming bits and pieces. You've got demotion, which means you can use uh, pitch uh, and roll to control different aspects of the sounds. I want to show you how it's set up properly with a MIDI keyboard. Cool things you can do with the pitch bend and a mod wheel on a MIDI keyboard when it's set with this. I also want to do one where it's hooked up to have I'll show you how to or how I hooked it up to my uh, uh, drum brute impact, which is just epic. Anyway, guys, listen, top job, cool beans. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, the Roland S1, it's it really has superpowers. You can do so, so, so much stuff. Impossible, really, to show it all in one video. Also has a, a very cool arpeggiator as well with different types and rates. I could do a video with that or cover it anyway in the next video. Right, brilliant. What's, what's the matter with you? Stop it. He, he scratches himself and doesn't stop when it hurts him. Right, anyway, guys, listen, top job. Cool beans. I will see you later. I'm going to turn the microphone down now. Oops, there we go. I'm going to turn the microphone down. Right, let Watson out because he's doing... Oh, he's, he's back. I'm going to turn the microphone down and play through a couple of the patches that I've made since I've had the S1. Brilliant. I'll see you guys later. ta -da.